Underwood. Thin ice! <laughs> To smoke some weed and shut up. My God. Oh, I thought for sure. There it is. Boom! Yes! All right. Damn it. Did I stop doing that? I guess I'm still doing that. All right. <laughs> you can't it's, stop it's, doing it's that. Nice. What am I, Matthew McConaughey? Uh, okay. There we go. Uh, episode 175. Yep. Correct. Uh, November 8th, 2023. Today is a uh, Wednesday, I think, right? Yeah. It is. Uh, yeah, the season is officially underway. You have maybe the worst college basketball slate ever. Like last night was unbelievably boring outside of the uh, the Auburn Baylor game was pretty good, but uh, really disgusting. And honestly, one thing I want to say is before we get into the Illinois game, uh, because I guess this is an Illinois podcast, I, I guess. Um, I think I wanted to disagree with a lot of the media people that were complaining about how the schedule was to start the season. But after last night, I think I, I think I'm on board with them. That's, that's pretty bad. I mean, it, there's like no juice in a lot of these games. But anyway, also one more point I want to make, uh, cause I saw this on Twitter, uh, People saying St. John's is back. They gave up 74 points to Stony Brook. St. John's, <laughs> they have better players. That seems not going to be that good. Anyway, moving along, Illinois, uh, Eastern Illinois, great game. Really good start for the Illini, especially early in the game. They looked awesome. Yeah, uh, struggled out of the gate a little bit. Um, they, were, they were down um, like 15-7 to 7 to start the game. Not a good look uh, against Eastern. But uh, they figured it out. Came out a little flat, but you'll have that. Uh, Crypto's here. What's up, Crypto? Jeff, what's going on? Quackle, how you doing? Good morning. It's been a while since we've had a morning podcast. So uh, having a little coffee this morning. Yep. Talking to Illini, which is nice. Uh, yeah, but I think uh, before we get into the game, actually, I think we need to talk about Sincere a little bit. Uh, sincere... Uh, has decided to redshirt this year. Um, Underwood said that he wants to get stronger, better offensively, become a 25-minute-per-game guy rather than a 10-minute-per-game guy. Uh, so kind of interesting. But after you know seeing DGL play uh, against Eastern, I guess I could see why Sincere might take this year to do that. Um, Illinois fans, of course, automatically go to he's gone, he's leaving. Um, smart of him to take a year off so he has more eligibility once he goes to that Atlantic 10 team that he's going to go to. So, I think you saying Atlantic 10 is disrespectful because the Atlantic 10 is <laughs> that's just a you comment I saw. That's just a comment said, I saw. Okay, these people are idiots. Then I'm they just saying that's said, what I saw. They should have said Mountain West or something, you know, show yeah. a little respect. <laughs> He would start somewhere in the mountain. Way. He would start. He would start somewhere in a power. Like he'd start in the pack. Whatever. Uh, I think this is. I think this is one guy that could do this, and I would be comfortable saying that he's not going to leave. And yeah. I think it's a good decision, given the fact that it's what he wants to do. And I don't know what we're supposed to say about it. I mean, hey, if he wants to do it, go ahead. Uh, and I think it makes a lot of sense if you look at a, like a lot of the structure of this team uh, in terms of guard. Like he's kind of would be playing a very, very lesser version of the Ty Rogers role. So yeah, yeah. I, th I mean, I think it's a, a mature move, a smart move by him um, to do this. Uh, you know, seeing how many guards Illinois has. You know, do you want to limit your time? Also, I don't think fundamentally I can work on his offense. That's the thing is. As who he is now, you can't play him enough. He needs to get better in offense. So I yeah, I don't really think his offense is as bad as people like his three point shooting wasn't was not awful. His free throw shooting's bad. Three point <laughs> shooting not terrible. Um, I don't think his offense is as bad as, but I don't. Yeah, he's definitely not playable in a lot of ways. Uh, but. You know, whatever. MJ, what's up? Uh, Jeff says, don't see Sincere improving his offense enough to play 25 minutes. 
That's the most I've ever seen his name butchered in a comic. Book. <laughs> that was <laughs> pretty bad. Uh, MJ, not sure if he'll transfer, but it is a smart move. He lucked into a role last year. He made a higher percentage of threes last year than his actual ability, and that kept his leash longer. Uh, I mean, yeah. What did he shoot from three? I don't think it was that bad. I uh, I don't remember honestly. I think you should remember that. Uh, yeah, thirty one percent is like fifty percent on that team last that's, year. That's true. That's true. Also, um, was- you did make fun of it. Make fun of him every time he shot, though. So. See, he like flicks it. It's weird, but it, it kind of works from three. It doesn't work from the free throw line. But Twenty from the free throw line, but like forty-eight point seven percent from two. Not bad for a guard. That's yeah. But yeah, I mean, you don't you don't see this much though in in the era of the transfer portal. You don't see this, and I think sincere is being sincere about his his thoughts. So um he did tweet out uh thank you all for respecting my decision to red shirt for basketball. I maybe he thought people thought he'd red shirt for football. I don't know why he had to put basketball but um your understanding and support means the world to me. Knowing that you all respect and stand by my choice allows me to focus on my personal growth and development. Also be there for my team during this time. Also sincere Nobody, I I just think it's weird that they did it like after this game, um, because everybody was asking where's sincere, where's sincere. Um, but he seemed excited to be there. I mean, he was hyping his team up, so uh, I, I, I believe him when he says this that he, he just wants to get better. So, yeah, anyways. Enough sincere talk. Uh, I'd like to also just real quick. Uh, I don't want to go uh, after Jeffrey. It. I don't want to go after Jeffrey too hard here, but it seems what? like we're drawing a lot of conclusions on teams after one game in the comments. Just to, maybe we'll get to it, I guess, for the uh, Oakland game. But it just seems like the conclusions are really being drawn hard here. I'm just saying. Like, can we really say that like Ohio State's bad after one? Like, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, a surprise team, Michigan. Yeah. If there's one thing I regret preseason Big Ten rankings, I should have had Michigan six and Indiana ten or whatever, which is not even a conclusion after one game. It's just like a Michigan on paper, I think I just don't like them. So then I was like, hey, I think they're going to stink. But then you got to think Doug McDaniel is probably always going to take a jump or a leap. I think there's a few Big Ten guards that have already looked like that after the – obviously not Ty Rogers, but – um you know, that's uh, neither here nor there. Uh, I don't know, whatever. I mean, the Big Ten as a conference, it's back. Michigan State doesn't count. Um, but, you know, Purdue looks good. So, yeah. I don't know. Did any Big Ten – the best opponent played by a Big Ten team so far has been Princeton, I think, or James Madison, one of the two. Might be James Madison. I don't know. I don't know what the spread was in the James Madison Michigan State game. If we want to be completely sidetracked, I can get into all this, but it's up to you. <laughs> it's whatever you want to do. No, it's cool. Whatever you want to do. Um, it's definitely right. Princeton, but anyway, okay. Yeah. Eastern Illinois, uh, hot start for them. <laughs> Eighty to fifty-two loss. Uh, as we always do, our player of the games. Um, you took dibs on DGL. Early, I did. Yeah. So. I feel like that was right, especially since I hyped him up. But then, like I said during the watch party, I said, I feel like I kind of backed off of that a little bit. I don't know why. Uh, Cause I think I was a little worried about what his role might be on this team and how much he might play. I don't know how many minutes he played. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't put that. No, down. I got it. I got it. I mean, I could look it up in five seconds. He played 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, 18 points, seven of 10 from the field, which is really something. Uh, two of five from three. Three assists, one steal, one block. Uh, yeah, I think you saw a lot of different things on display. The athleticism was there. That that left-handed block at the rim was probably the best play by anybody on the team in the entire game. Uh, I think it was like, if you want to look it up, it was like 11 minutes to go in the first half when that happened. So that was a great play. Yeah. Uh, I think... I the way that the the minutes were in this game very 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 much concerns me if they're going to be doing this every game I don't think they are I think some of this was opponent based and I think if you can get a game where you have Hawkins and Shannon playing less than 30 minutes I think you do it and they could do it in this game Hawkins will get there but uh yeah I, I 
like Moretti in danger, maybe not danger, but Moretti, just Moretti alone is not going to be playing double digit minutes. I don't think. Right. So I think that'll be a change. And I also think you're not going to see uh, Hansbury consistently getting 14 minutes. Yeah. I mean, not once you get into actual big 10 play um, against, against solid teams. Uh, I, I did like Moretti and Hansbury's two man game. I talked about it in the watch party, but the way that they they run the pick and roll is really nice. It's something you haven't seen from Illinois a lot, but uh, but yeah, DGL was really good. Um, uh, Underwood said, "Quote: I'm going to be careful with Draven and how much I want to compliment him because I don't want him to read it and actually think it's true. He's a gifted scorer. I think he's trying to be funny, but." came off kind of mean but uh he also said when he quits making some silly mistakes on the defensive side which all freshmen do he's got a bright future so i think he made a very smart move not going to purdue uh because he would not be playing 20 minutes a game at purdue i don't think and i don't know if he's even going to play 20 minutes a game here but uh purdue yeah that wouldn't have been a great fit for him but that's just you know that's just me yeah um yeah i think uh I, like I said, the way that DGL played, I see why, you know, Sincere might want a red shirt this year just because I think DGL is going to take a lot of his minutes, especially if he can pick it up on the defensive end. Um, I went with Terrence Shannon Jr. Uh, I probably an easy pick, I guess, just because. But uh, 16 points, 5 of 10 from the field. He was 3 of 7 from 3 with 5 rebounds, an assist, 2 steals, and he didn't have any turnovers, which is nice. So... Um, he did kind of struggle at the beginning. Everybody kind of did. Illinois just looked flat out of out of the gate. Uh, a lot of isolation ball, not a lot of team basketball like we saw against Kansas. Um, <clears throat> but I, he hit a three to end the first half, and then he hit a three to open up the second half, which I thought was big for Illinois after struggling for so long. Um, Terrence did take blame. Uh, for Illinois coming out flat, he said, quote, we came out flat. That's on me. I have to do a better job of being a leader. So um, Jeff says Rutgers sucks. <laughs> Steve says Hansberry is better all-around player than Dane, in my opinion. Uh, it, it might be a little weaker, but um, I think basketball IQ-wise he probably is. Uh, Jeff says uh, Iowa can shoot from the outside. I have to make a phone call. So if I you think you have like – over. I think you have like 10 teams left, Jeff. If you want to keep listing yeah. your opinions on the big 10 teams, we'll take them. I'm going to be a minute. So. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, let's get to the starters. Uh, Ty Rogers, 16 minutes, six points, three of six from the field. Uh, oh, for one from three. God knows why he shot a three, two rebounds and a block. I don't know. I, I think Ty's going to see more than 16 minutes in a lot of games, but I also don't think it's going to be that much more than that. You look at last season, uh, his most minutes in a game, he played 33 minutes against Michigan in the double overtime game, which doesn't really count because it wasn't regulation. It was double overtime. Uh, in a regulation game, he played 29 against Northwestern in the game at home. Uh, he played 28 against Monmouth early in the season. So I don't know what Ty's minutes are going to look like. Uh, one thing I do know is that he's going to be a starter in pretty much every game and he's not really their point guard. Cause I don't know if this team really even, I, I don't even the point guard conversation I'm already over and tired of. Um, so it's enough of that. Uh, Marcus Damask played 29 minutes. It's the most on the team. Uh, six points. He was two for eight from three, one or two for eight from the field. One of six from three, four rebounds, three assists. Uh, I think you saw what Damask can be. Um, I think you saw what Damask can be if he's not shooting the ball well, which is uh, a good defender and a guy who's on top of it IQ-wise. Um, but one for six from three, I think you're not going to see that very much. And also, Jeffrey, I'm not taking a shot. I'm just saying, keep going. Let's go. <clears throat> yeah, so I already did Ty Rogers, and I'm so <laughs> sick of the point guard conversation because this team, whatever. But Damask, I thought he was fine. He just didn't make shots. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought Mass was fine. Um, it wouldn't be a Brad Underwood post game without you know throwing an elite out there. So Brad said that uh, Marcus was elite on the defensive side and hammering assignments. He hit every single assignment. So there you go. 
Just in, you know, sometimes the shots don't fall. You'll have that. Yep. Uh, Gary, 20 yep. minutes, four points, uh, two for five from the field. He was 0 for three from three, had a rebound on a block. Um, he was kind of off this game too, which, I mean, if you can have a game where, you know, Gary A's off, Hawkins didn't have a good game. Um, if you can have those games and still win by 20 or whatever they ended up, what they end up winning by? 28. 28. Good didn't cover the spread. Good work. Yeah, um, they covered it if you got it all week. That's true. If you got it early. If you got it early. Not even but, early. If you got it the day before, it was probably like 27 and a half. Easy cover. That's true. That's true. But yeah, Quincy, I mean, he was best when he went to the basket. Uh, but yeah, he, you know, guys, I don't know. They just came out different than what it was against the Kansas game. So yeah. Uh, uh, Coleman, 14 minutes, which is very surprising. What do you average? Like 33, 34 last year? Sure. Why not? <laughs> Good talk. Uh, played quite a bit. One point. Uh, he was over two. They were both threes. He had five rebounds, two assists, a block, two turnovers. Last year against Eastern, he had 23 points, 12 rebounds. Um, Underwood, somebody asked Underwood if he was comfortable uh, with Coleman guarding the five spot because Hamlin put two good moves on him and scored four points. And <laughs> Underwood said, did you see him guard Zach Eady last year? So... Uh, I don't think there's any point questioning Coleman guarding the five after one game. <laughs> yeah. um, he had a he bad did. game. I mean, Hamlin did make him look silly on on two back to back plays. Hey, props um, to Hamlin. Tip of the yeah. cap. Uh, show a little respect. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I think it, maybe it's a good thing that Coleman played horrible against a, a bad opponent. Uh, I mean, he didn't sure. really do that last year. He got way too much confidence from the three from three point range after making everything early in the season last year. And then obviously set the tone with the fact that the first shot of the season was, I mean, he almost missed the, the basket. I mean, it hit the bottom right of the backboard. <laughs> yeah. Not good. Uh, Fly the dub says minutes will vary depending on the situation. Who's playing best at the time. Yeah. Underwood did say something about that afterwards. Uh, he said, quote, perform, play good, play better. You want to play, play better. You want to play, do what you're supposed to do. You want to play, practice better. Boom. Yeah. Uh, Bergie said, just like free throws don't fall. Only Ethan can make free throws. Maybe we bring him in. I don't know if you guys, sure. you guys were at the watch party. You saw Ethan go 7 to 10 at halftime. So. I'll go 10 for 10 next time. Maybe not. <laughs> Um, Hansberry probably Hansberry and Goody probably could have been honor honorable mention uh player of the games. Hansberry came in, got eight rebounds. Um, he did make a three, went one for two from three, uh, seven points. He just seems to find the ball well off the rim, which is nice. Um, Goody was three of five from three with nine points and six rebounds. Um, him and DGL both played nine 19 minutes. Uh and then, like, kind of everybody else, just Gary A played 20. Um, a lot of guys played not very many. Uh, Danger, 12 minutes, 8.6 rebounds. Uh, Illinois continues to give him the ball 20 feet away from the basket rather than trying to get it to him early um, and get in the post game. So uh, Brad thought that Dane played very well in this game. Good. Uh, Moretti, three assists, three turnovers. Not great. Harmon, kind of obsolete, three rebounds, one assist, two points. So good. Uh, other notes and quotes. Uh, you skipped good to him entirely. No, I talked about him already. You're not listening. Is the you problem. You're you just say, you didn't say three for five from three. Yeah, yes, I did. When I talked about Hansberry, I, I said they could have been honorable. Yeah, mention. I didn't hear Pay the rest attention. of that. Did you say the rest of that? Holy cow! I lost. I lost Just like keep a saying minute. Good. I lost like a minute there of not listening because I heard the <laughs> Hansberry and Goody could have been honorable, and then everything else after that was just <laughs> holy cow. Uh, so Goody three for five from three, nine points, six rebounds. I'm surprised he had six rebounds. Uh, Nineteen minutes for uh, him and DGL. So yeah. How about that? 
Deja vu for anybody that was actually paying attention. I said it first. Mm -hmm. Uh, 12 for 23 from the line, 52.2%. Solid. I mean, when is Terrence Shannon ever going to be that bad from the line? That's true. Terrence uh, missed his first two, and then he ended up, what, one three for, for three seven, for eight. three for eight. Yeah. Ouch. I mean, come on. It's not oh, other than that, it was fine. I mean, Hansbury two for three. Uh Hawkins one for two, which is exactly what I expect. DGL two for three. Damask one for two. That was a little surprising. He'd probably be two for two in normal situations. Tyo for one. That's natural. Uh Moretti two for two. AJ Red is never going to shoot free throws again this season. So one for two. <laughs> I don't think you'd take away too much from 12 for 23 when your best guy who shot. Uh, but he might not be their best guy this season. But last season, uh, he was, you know, 80% from the free throw line, essentially, which isn't great. But, like, in today's game, with the what you expect out of an Illini team, that's that's pretty much 90%. Uh, add 10. But uh, <laughs> he's not going to be 3 for 8 very often, I wouldn't think. No. Um, yeah, it's, he was kind of the big reason why I guess it was so low. But We well, missed 5, you know. That's take, not good. Take those away and say he goes three for three. The, can you do the math on that? If he goes three for three. If he goes three for three. That's 12 for 18. 12 <laughs> divided by 18. That's 66%. That looks a lot different than 52. Uh, two. two, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, Illinois was 10 of 32 from three, 31%, which is fine because Damask isn't going to go one for six every game, Boom. right? If Damask goes one for one, that's 10 <laughs> for 27. 10 divided by 27. Yep. Yep. Um, 37%, that looks a lot different than 31%, doesn't it? It's true. I mean, I'm not. I'm not mad. Goody's not going to go. 32, Goody's so. not going to go three for five very often. More often than not, Goody's probably going to go five for five. Yeah. So take that away. Plus Damask. Take those couple away. Add two. That's twelve for uh, twenty-seven. You know, let's do the quick math on that. Twelve divided by twenty-seven. You're going to algebra. Forty-four percent, folks. Forty-four percent looks a lot different than thirty-one percent, doesn't it? It does, but you know what they shot? Thirty-one percent. So. You know, what I don't it, think can what we it really, could look like and what it actually looks like. Uh, can we take too much know. away from what this team actually is as a, as a three point shooting team in a game like this? Like, I feel like you're throwing up a lot of threes that you might not normally throw up in a game like this. <laughs> That's true. I'm, I'm surprised they only shot 32, to be honest. I would have expected more, but they were dominant uh, inside the, the three. They were 19 for 26 inside the three-point line, which is pretty good. And I feel like they missed a few of those early. So I bet – I would say they were probably like 19 for 23 it's after the, the early stretch. They really didn't hit Brad's number of shooting 30% from three or whatever it was supposed to be, right? I think they shot, they shot more threes, it sounds like you're saying, if my math is correct. They shot six more threes than – twos not a good look for brad and by the way spent. eastern illinois shot 47 more twos than threes 58 twos to 11 threes that's how you should do it they were 27 percent from two illinois was 73 percent from two you want to walk that comment back that's what i thought all right uh <laughs> uh 15 assists 12 turnovers uh eastern only had eight turnovers that's kind of surprising yeah, three of, them, three of them alone were from our good friend Jermaine Hamlin, who apparently is the next coming of Dikembe Mutombo. The way he <laughs> looked against—that's uh, a bad reference. Hakeem Olajuwon, the way he looked uh, against uh, Coleman, I guess early. Apparently, I don't know. I didn't really. I mean, I forgot that that ever even happened. It's how little I care about it. And I think the question asked is ridiculous. Are you all right? It's one game, and we're already asking these ridiculously stupid questions. Ooh. I agree. He got dominated by Jermaine Hamlin, who, by the way, had four points. <laughs> he did. had four points. He looked good on those four points, though. Jesus, four points, four fouls, three turnovers. What a game the former Illini had. Played 22 minutes for Eastern Illinois. Why are you hating on Jermaine Hamlin all of a sudden? I wish Illinois could play Illinois State because I want to see Lee <laughs> Cook. 
uh, Coleman. He would dominate him, and then it'd yeah. be great. That would be a good question then. Yeah, uh, the 12 turnovers is more where Brad wants to be. I mean, you take away Moretti's three that he had since he won't be playing much. He won't in the be big playing. Team. That's nine. You know, that's not 12 minus so. three is nine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I talked about the playing time. I, I just can't believe that guys are asking about playing time. And that said, like, why are we starting this conversation already? You play the guys that are playing well. And in, Underwood, fairness, in fairness to the reporters, I guess. Is there really a lot to ask about this game? I mean, it was pretty boring uh, game and not a lot happened. And it was, you ask questions that, that can cause diversity in the, in the team. Like, Oh, why isn't it this guy playing? I don't feel like the right word. (laughs) Adversity. I mean, add. How about division? You know, division might be a good word. There's yeah, that's what I meant. Um, All right. Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, <laughs> uh, Underwood asked if it was a good thing to experience, you know, the, the slow start and stuff after the Kansas game. And he said, quote, yeah, they read all of your guys' stuff and they started to believe it, uh, the media guys. What did I say at the beginning of the game? Like you. Um, it's always newspaper great to clipping. learn. Huh? They're reading the newspaper clippings. Yeah, you About are how good old. they are. I said that during the watch party. It's always great to learn from when – from a win when you don't play well, you can't rest on the last game. Nobody cares anymore. Also, the game didn't even count. So how the hell does that, why is this even being talked about? That's how stupid this is that they're doing these exhibitions and not doing them in the regular season. Because we're talking about a a game that did not count from a week ago and acting like, Oh, they're still riding a high after a charity exhibition went over Kansas. Stupid. Yeah. Fly the W. Yeah, I I quoted it earlier because somebody said something about it. I think Jeff said something. Maybe. Do you worry about continuity and rotation towards the like February area? Like if we're just throwing random lineups out there in big games, I mean, is that gonna like you know? Do you think they're gonna be random in big games? I don't know. It's a lot of, you know, perform, play good, play better. You want to play, play better. You want to play, do what you're supposed to do. You want to play, practice better, that type of stuff. Are we going to put – they should put a banner of that quote on the wall. At the <laughs> Farm Center. It's so brilliant. It was a great quote. Oh, his speech in the locker room? No, I did not see that. I'll have to look at that. Um, But he did say that uh, DGL had the best practice um, this week. Gary had the best practice last week, so it didn't surprise him. I think DGL was better and Gary was better last week. I think you want your your guys to come out with uh, playing with their hair on fire, and I think DGL is the only one that did that. I don't think we saw that from like anybody else. And I think Uh, maybe maybe Goody because his was literally on fire. I think DGL can give you that bump that Sincere gave last year um, with his athleticism. Um, he might be a, a step slow on defense, but I think his athleticism athleticism makes up for it. Uh, you know, you talked about that block, which was pretty insane. So, yep. Anyways, next game, game two. Here we are. Yeah. Um, I guess the timestamps guy's not even doing anything today. All right. 28 45. Uh, it's fine. Uh, game number two of the season, big game, big game. Uh, Oakland starting the season with back-to-back Big Ten opponents. How about that? Thoughts on that? Sounds right. Oakland plays a lot of Big Ten teams, I believe. And do you know where this university is located? Uh, around Detroit, I think. All right, there you go. It was a test. <laughs> that was a test. Yeah. And you past uh hold on i was trying to do something else uh okay where am i at here all right we're back uh illinois 25th in the poll still obviously they will be they're one and oh on the season oakland oh and one uh this game is friday october nope uh just friday november 10th i'm struggling uh, 7 p.m. Central Standard, right? Is that the time for the game? 7? That was a total guess. I just put it there. I don't know. You didn't even know what the 
Eastern game what channel was on. So yep, I, Big Ten Plus for this one. Nailed it. This one's Big Ten Plus, just so everybody knows. Uh Oakland, I thought they played pretty well in a 79-73 loss to Ohio State. I think Ohio State's another team that's gonna take a while to figure out what they are. You look at their rotation, their lineup in that game. You know, Bruce Thornton is back, Roddy Gale is back, uh Akpara's back, but they bring in Jameson Battle. Uh, Evan Mahaffey from uh, Penn State they bring in as well, who, by the way, apparently ran the point in that game per Ken Palm, uh, which is interesting given the fact that they say he played the four at Penn State last year. Uh, but also they have Scotty Middleton, the freshman. So, you know, they're going to – it's going to maybe take them a little bit, especially off of how bad they were last season. But one thing about Oakland is that they are old and they have a lot of guys that have been there. Uh, Oakland shot 14 for 35 from three in that game, 40%. That's going to keep you in games against anybody. Um, former Michigan State guard Rocket Watts is on this team. Everybody remembers him probably when he scored 21 points against Illinois on February 11th, 2020, which I believe was the IO looking like he tore everything in his leg game, I think, where he slipped. I think it might have been that game. Uh-huh. Sounds feasible. Sounds extremely correct. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if it is, though. A uh, bit undersized, I would say. Generally, they don't have anybody listed above six foot nine. Not that that matters, but I think that there's something to that when they play teams that have the interior presence of, let's say, a, uh, you know, who's the team I was thinking of from the other night? Hold on. Oregon. Mm. Oregon's got six eleven seven foot in their lineup. Uh, but that they probably don't play, so who cares? Uh, Oakland projected starting lineup. Rocket Watts uh, apparently starts at the 162, 182. 19 minutes in the first game. I don't know how much he's going to play. 0 for 5 from the field, 0 points. So somebody may have picked him as a player to watch. I don't know if we're even going to be able to watch him because he might not even play 20 minutes, but uh, who knows. Uh, guard Blake Lampman, 6'3", 184. Fifth year at Oakland. Shot 4 of 7 from 3 in the opener. Uh, Jack. Golki would be my guess in the pronunciation of that name. 6'3", 215. I talked about him during the watch party because I saw the stat line. 6 of 18 from the field against Ohio State, and they were all threes. 6 for 18 by himself from three, which is weird. Another <laughs> terrible players to watch pick there. That, that one's courtesy of me. Uh, forward Trey Townsend, 6'6", 220. Why, why are you ruining the surprise? Nobody's listening. Uh, Trey Townsend, uh, 17 points, nine rebounds, four assists in the opener, his fourth year at Oakland. And then Chris Conway also starting. He starts at the five, six, nine, two, twenty one, fourteen 14 minutes in the first game, fourth year at Oakland. So they got a couple guys that have been there for a long time. Uh, they're better offensively than defensively by all the metrics. Uh, their three, three starters, Lampman, Golke, Conway played 35 plus minutes. Okay, I might have done that wrong. Lampman, Golke, Townsend played 35-plus minutes against Ohio State. Uh, They held them to 7 for 25 from 3, which is 28%, uh, which I could see Illinois doing that in this game, 7 for 25. That seems about right. Uh, Ken Palm, adjusted offense, Illinois 21st, Oakland 205. Defense, Illinois 19th, Oakland 297. Uh, Illinois 25th in experience, Oakland is 36th. Illinois is 19th in bench minutes after one game, which I don't think you can take too much away from that stat (laughs) given who the teams are playing. Oakland 201st, so not a lot of depth off the bench. I think you can actually take that away from them. Uh, You can actually take this stat away and be like, this makes sense because they played Ohio State. Um, Thank you for that there, uh, Igordito Fredones. Thank you. Um, Illinois 48th in average height. Oakland 215th. So Illinois has really flipped a lot of these numbers from last season, especially the experience number up to 25th in the country. Fly to the dub said 12 of, us, 12 of us are watching. Don't be dissing us, Ethan. If you guys haven't learned by now, Ethan loves to diss our, our listeners. So it was kind a of, test to see if anybody was listening. How about that? Of, kind of his thing is, you know, it's, I, I think he treats our listeners like girls. You, what is it? Uh, treat them like, dirt they stick like mud or something like that that doesn't feel appropriate to say uh, <laughs> i mean one, that's a saying is it i mean, I mean I, yeah, yeah. maybe not maybe, maybe not from 1926 <laughs> i'm old players to watch 
Just going to act like that one didn't happen. Too late. It already happened. Uh, my players to watch are Coleman Hawkins from Illinois and Rocket Watts from Oakland. Um, I Coleman, after you know, not a great game against Eastern, I'd like to see him get going. I think that he's going to be a big part of Illinois, you know, being better uh, this year, or going far, or doing anything relevant. Uh, Coleman's going to have to play better. It'll be interesting to see how he plays in the five. I assume he's going to play in the five again. Um, seeing how. Uh, Oakland kind of runs a, a smaller lineup. Like you said, they don't have anybody over six and nine. So we'll see if he goes inside at all um, or if he just stands behind and chucks up threes. Uh, Rocket Watts, you talked about him playing at Michigan State. He played at Michigan State in 2019. So he's been around the block for a while. Uh, he was a shooting guard at Michigan State. Then he moved to the point guard. And then he went to Mississippi State. Now he's at Oakland for a second year. Uh, I don't know why he didn't play as much last game. Maybe because he was 0 for 5 from the field. Um, but, you know, this team is – this Oakland team, like you said, is older. So, I would like – I want to see Illinois play older guards and see how they compare with them. So, Yeah, I just – I wonder Rocket Watts' minutes in this game because he didn't play very much against uh, Ohio State. And if you look yeah. at last season, he – finished the year with a game where he played 18 minutes. So I don't know. It feels like he's been very much up and down minutes wise. I, I wouldn't be that surprised if he played 30 minutes in this game, but uh, maybe he just owns Illinois because he did play well in that one game. He faced him <laughs> out of like four. He wasn't good in any of the others, but uh, for me, Ty Rogers uh, on the Illini side. And then of course the great Jack Golke on the Oakland side. I think the Illini offense needs to get off to a better start. Uh, because they got off to a horrible start against Eastern. And I think with Ty Rogers starting in the position that he's going to be starting, I think it's going to be up to him to uh, get them into something rather than just standing around, which is what they did to start the game against Eastern. And I think people probably look at this like Ty Rogers is going to start the second game. Where's DGL? DGL is not going to start. So nice try. I just feel like somebody thinks that, but maybe you're know. probably right. I'm sure people do think that. Uh, and the other question is, will Golke take a shot inside the three-point line? Because he took 18 threes. <laughs> I don't in know the if first he knows game. how to. And we'll Do you see. think he even goes inside the three-point line? It doesn't seem that way, no. Uh, Imbrot says, I'm only partially here when the market opens. Uh, Crypto says, what was Hawkins crying about last game? <sighs> Looked like Chester was trying to hold him back from someone in the huddle. I didn't see that. Did you see that? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know if I can think of something that I care less about from this game than that. Like, it's not. So you did see it? No, I didn't. And I don't care. I think it was probably something related to the refs. I don't know. Uh, Steve says, what was Coleman's attitude problem during the game? He was bitching about something during a timeout and never played well after that. Predictions. Predictions. Harold says, I saw the same thing. Ting. I saw the. Thing ting, <laughs> he's yelling at someone. Uh, we, don't, we don't pay Predictions. attention very well in our watch parties, do we? I remember him getting mad at the refs on one play, but that was it. Uh, but also, like, why do we have to take not everything has to be taken away from a game? Like, we could just pretend like that didn't happen. I love that. Like, it's okay for you to talk shit about players, but when somebody else does, you're like, why would you say that? You're stupid. Because I, I talk that. about I talk about ball on the court. <laughs> uh, my prediction: Illinois wins eighty to sixty-eight. I think it's going to be a closer game than the Eastern game. Um, I think Illinois is going to pull it out, but I don't think they're going to win by twenty. Yeah, I fully regret picking that uh, 86 66. I don't know. I thought that you were going to have them winning by thirty, so I thought I could undercut you. you did. But... I bet you did. But, uh, I think Oakland, yeah, I think this might be like a 36-30 game at the half, you know? Like, I think this might be a pretty close. But also, I think a lot of people look at the Ohio State game that they played and they lost by six, and they're like, hey, this team can hang around. But I don't know. What is Ohio yeah. State? Uh, not very good. My seventh-ranked seventh preseason team. Uh, Quackle said, hey, did you see Coleman yelling? Uh, Porch Fly said, that's a tang <laughs> I saw, too. He was heated. Crypto says we're pushing Ethan's buttons. 
Fly the dub. Hawkins was pissed about non calls by the refs. Thank you, Fly the dub. There we go. We got an answer. All that feels to, like just all you gotta do is ask. Is all that just a guess? Ask. I don't know if that's a. No. Was he being held back from the refs or a teammate? What do you guys think? How much do you guys think Illinois wins by against Oakland? Let us know. Let us Thirty. Know. Uh, also, uh, comment, like, subscribe, or whatever. Uh, we're up to 377. Wow. Pushing on uh, pushing on 400. So, Also on Twitter, I put out a tweet that we're getting close to 700 followers. We're at 698. Ooh, two so of them. So if anybody wants to make a couple burner accounts, much appreciated <laughs> on that front. Fly the Dub says Illinois by 16. Quackle says Illinois by 18. So... They uh they believe you more twenty ish. Uh, yeah. So today is uh National Signing Day. Uh, you forgot about one of yeah. My bad. Players. I fixed. I wrote something about him. I just forgot to you put did. the headline. <laughs> I know. I think everybody forgot about him. Honestly. Ouch. Ouch. But yeah, Marez Johnson, Jace Butler, and Jason Jaxtis, uh will be signing today. Marez already signed. I don't. I think it's at like three thirty or something. I don't know what they said. Everybody signed already, but yeah, Marez signed officially. It's over. Signed. <laughs> Anyways, they're Brad all signing today. I, they they tweeted about everybody. Brad said. Listening. Brad said he was excited. <laughs> uh, do you think Marez Johnson is the most hype of any Illini recruit since Io? Because I put fact because I think it's a fact. Yeah, I think he has to be. He's the highest ranked one since Io. <laughs> well, Miller and Curbelo had hype, but they were like together. And it wasn't quite as high, especially yeah. with Curbelo because Miller was higher ranked. And then Sky Clark, you know, nice guy. Uh, his Louisville team giving up 93 points to UMBC, winning by one and dropping. They won and dropped 20 spots in Ken Palm. Uh, I hate everything about that program. Um, that's why when Kentucky plays Louisville, I think we should all – rally behind Kentucky because we hate Louisville. I think that's how it should be. We shouldn't hate Kentucky. Who cares about Coleman and Antigua? Those guys were bums. Uh, but, yeah, Marez Johnson, very excited. Uh, he's elite elite at signing, elite at doing everything as crypto alluded, alluded to. Um, does Marez start from day yes. one? Yeah. I think yeah. he does. Uh, if he doesn't, then what are we even doing here? Harold said that Coleman was yelling at a couch. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, <laughs> the Illini 2024 class per 247. Uh, right now, Marez Johnson's a four-star number 35. I have to think he's higher ranked in a lot of other places, if we're being honest. I think he's in the top I think 30. He's 29 in, uh, yeah. in one of them. I don't know. Number one player in the state, though. So he's got that. And that I just look at that and I see, boy, what happened to Chicago? <laughs> He used to be a top 10 player, number one in the state. Uh, Quaggle said, did we ever talk about the impact of Paxson Warden leaving? We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, Jason Jaxties. I still don't know how to pronounce that one. Is that right? Jack Jack Sties. Right. Uh, three-star, number 110, number four in the state of Illinois. Probably the most forgotten about player in this class by far, especially since I forgot to write his name down. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like nobody talks about him at all. Probably because he is like the same size height wise and position wise as Merez, but not as good. So, uh, and then everybody's favorite recruit, Jace Butler, the guard, three star, number 162, number 20 combo guard in the country, which is bad. It's Everybody, everybody's hating on him already, including you. I think he's uh, the, he, they just put out a thing. He's the number one uh, player in Northern California. So, uh, fifth ranked class in the Big Ten. Behind Michigan State, Rutgers, Purdue, and U.S. When I saw USC on this list, I was like, <laughs> "Come on!" It's kind of it was actually kind of shocking, even though I knew that it was happening. But right. seeing USC, that, yeah, now that you actually see it, yeah, weird. Yeah. Uh, but fifth rank class, yeah, the Big Ten's got some good classes. Uh, but Illinois, seventeenth rank class in the country right now. Uh, I just want to put this that Duke has four or five stars in Duke, this class. It, Duke literally, it, it's unreal. They're like an NBA G League team. Yeah, no team they has more probably than beat one. most NBA G League teams right now. Yeah, no, no other team has one. Yeah, so more than no one. other team has one. No That's other team crazy. has more than one. I correct myself very quickly there. Um, <laughs> got them all. <laughs> yeah, I think Rutgers has one. 
and then they have a really highly ranked four star, and then Michigan State's somewhere in the mix too. But uh, yeah, this class I think is a little underrated. Everybody likes Merez, but nobody talks about Jack Stiz, Jack Stiz, or Jace Butler. Uh, yeah, I can see Jack Stiz uh, redshirting. Uh, Underwood talked about how he needs to gain weight and muscle. Do you um, think Fears reclasses to this class and comes to Illinois? Man, I don't know. Um, th- it sounds like that's the only way Illinois gets him. But I don't know what that does. I think if they get Fears, I think that Sincere might transfer, sadly. But. Would you rather have Fears or, or Sincere? I almost called him transfer, by the way. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I I. Probably can't answer, answer the that. question. Answer it. Uh, fears is the number two player in the state of Arizona. Fears. Class. I probably want fears. I feel like, like I love Sincere. I just we, his he's got to play. He's got to get better offensively. We've fallen into this trap before. Do though. you so? Do you think Sincere redshirting hurts Illinois at all? Like, like, did you see that? And you're like, oh no, this is going to hurt us. I think it. Answer the question. I think it hurts me thinking that the DGL played the way he did. If DGL does nothing, don't you think we think a little differently? I agree. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Fly the Dub says Duck Fook. By the way, the number six player in the 2024 class apparently is going to go to Duke. He hasn't committed yet. Uh, His name is VJ Edgecombe. What a name. Hell of a name. That is a name. From uh, Long Island Lutheran. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, you look at this. Rutgers, as long as they get Ron Harper Jr.'s brother, they're going to have the number two and number three players in this class. Yeah. Duke has 1, 6, 11, 16, 20. So that's kind of insane. Uh, but you know what another takeaway from this season is going to be? This Kentucky team might win a national championship. I want to throw that out there. Does anybody want to hear that? Because it's true. Look it up. <laughs> You want to talk about ridiculous recruiting classes? Kentucky had three, five, six, and twenty-one from this year's class. But anyway, uh, very much like a normal Calipari team. But uh, Merez Johnson, good player. Yeah, you can finally be happy. I mean, he's 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 been committed for two years. He's playing Saint Rita. Yeah, I think you've been doubtful for two two plus years. I don't think it was me who was doing that. Yeah, you always say that until people sign. You're always like, "Who cares? We're not even talking about him." That's what did he want. did he play some more? Did he transfer to Saint Rita, or does he did he transfer from Saint Rita? I don't know. Uh, Jeff says, "Think that's I why think they came out Thornton flat." Now. Gonna miss his spark, but didn't bring both sides of the game with him. You sounded like a complete robot for most of that. Comment. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Your don't worry. Was- Brad thinks that DGL and Luke Goody can bring the same spark that Sincere brought. Uh, Marez Johnson committed on November 28th, 2021, by the way. Two years and three days, somebody said today. He had he, was, he had offers from Iowa, Nebraska, Northern Illinois, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Providence, and Siena. I like how Siena thought they had a chance. I like how Northern Illinois thought they had a chance. I like how Iowa thought they had a chance. That's cute. Fly the dub says cuck Kentucky. <laughs> We're just going to do this for everybody. Anyway. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, around the Big Ten, um, I yeah. mean, not a whole lot has happened, but enough has happened to, you know, talk about it. Some people have already made comments about what happened. Yeah, let's Big get ten. back. Uh, we had the Brots. What do you think about Michigan State getting beat so much for being ranked number four? Uh, everybody that watches this knows that I'm a total sharp when it comes to college hoops rankings. So you look at my rankings here. I didn't have number four, okay? I doubled it. I had a number eight, so nice try. You did. Um, yeah, I think they shouldn't have been ranked number four. But I also think they shouldn't have lost that game. Do you I also think-, think James Madison's a pretty good mid-major school. But Yeah, James Madison's good. Um, it's, people are already blaming Izzo's coaching, like – <laughs> Which seems weird to me, but I guess they didn't. He he didn't play Booker enough. I didn't really. I don't really know Michigan State's team that well right now. Um, but yeah, they were they were not happy with the way Izzo coaches. So I guess fire Izzo. Let's start that hashtag. 
it's tough to win a game when you shoot that badly from three. Yeah, one of 20 from three, one of 21, something like that. Yeah. Um, Terrible. Remember last year when they played at Illinois, they went over seven. So they've been known to not make very many threes in some games. Uh, but Rutgers also lost to Princeton. Princeton, top 100 mid major team, tough opponent to start, but you're at home. You should win that game. Uh, the spread was pretty low. It was only six and a half, I think. Um, yeah, Muck, Michigan State. Michigan State also lost because James Madison made plays down the stretch. Yeah. Which I think matters. Uh, Indiana game last night was boring as hell. <laughs> so. Yeah, Indiana was down eight, I believe, and then went on a 16 to two run, something like that. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast made a three, got a steal, made another three, got a steal, and their best shooter missed a three to get it within one. Um, so yeah, Indiana, you know, they, they struggled. Uh, some somebody said something about Woodson playing, not playing politics and playing the guys that he should be playing. Uh, which is, you know, good as a coach because, you know, Brad Underwood kind of went through that with Sky Clark, right? But uh, anybody else stand out to you from the Big you know, Ten? Indiana had in? Indiana had four guys play 30-plus minutes and three guys play 34-plus minutes. Trey Galloway, 37 minutes. He was really good in that game, uh, 16 points, four rebounds to assist. But uh, elsewhere in the Big Ten, I think Wisconsin, you know, they scored a ton of points without Esegen. So I think that matters. I mean, they did give up 76 to Arkansas State, which is not great, but uh, Arkansas State's not, you know, I think they're going to be on the rise in a couple of years, but they're still a little bit, you know, ways away. But uh, Wisconsin's offense did look very good. They were 33 of 48 inside the three-point line. I think Michigan's going to be better than we expected, especially if Doug McDaniel is healthy and they let him kind of do his thing offensively. Um I think Olivier Kumwa is probably the best at his position in the Big Ten when it comes to like the power forward spot. Uh, I don't know what Namari Burnett's going to be for this team, but he was pretty good he in was. the first game. Yeah, and they have a lot of size. I think that's going to be a big factor. You look at like Kumwa six nine, Terrence Williams six nine or six seven, uh, Terrence Reed six ten, Will Cheddar six eight, Trey Jackson six uh, ten. They got a lot of size. Yeah, they lost to Princeton. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, they lost Princeton. Last year's, uh, I want to say Cinderella team, but they played well in the tournament last year. So, uh, Florida Gulf Coast also was missing uh, probably their best player, too. Transfer from Purdue. Was he from Purdue? Isaiah Thomas, I think. Anyways. Yeah. So... Anybody I else you want to talk about? A lot of Big Ten teams gave up more points than I would have expected. But I also don't think the Big Ten – I think not all – a lot of them didn't play uh, their best opponent. Like, the, a lot of them played better opponents than – some decent mid-major opponents in there. Like, uh, Samford is not that bad, but Purdue destroyed them. Yeah. Um, but like Wisconsin gave up 76 to Arkansas State, Michigan gave up 74 to UNC Asheville. Obviously, Michigan State giving up the, the 79 in overtime to James Madison, Ohio State giving up 73 to Oakland, Iowa only giving up 68, I think is a big win. That's like giving up 38. Uh, Northwestern gave up 70 61 to Binghamton, whatever. I just my point makes no sense, but I just feel like it's interesting that some of these teams gave up. 70 plus points to some of these opponents. I don't know. Minnesota covered the spread. And who'd beat, they play? Beat Bethune Cookman by 20. Dang. I think they were 16 and a half point favorites or 17 and a half. So, yeah. Better than Illinois. Uh, Jeff said Sanford looked like a high school team. You know why they look like that, Jeff? Because Purdue is really good. That's true. Sanford is uh, probably. Second or third best team in the SoCon, which is not that bad of a mid-major conference. There's some pretty good teams. There's also a lot of bad teams. But Purdue, I think, is by far the best team in this guy. I don't even think it's close. Like, it's not even it, – there's nobody even close to them right now. 
And I don't see how anybody – like, how could you think otherwise? Yeah. And they're, we're going to find out, you know, how good Purdue is very, very soon, right? They're playing in the – when is that? Feast week? Feast week. Yeah, Maui. Maui field loaded. Uh, yeah, yeah. Samford, Samford is small, but that's really because – a lot of mid-major teams are small, and also they have some smaller guards, but they have some. They have a lot of wings: uh, six nine, six seven, six five, six five, six six, six eleven, all played. And I think part of why you're saying they're small is because their starting point guard is five foot eight. They lost to a sixteen seed. Yeah, that was last year, though. This I can't. One, I, can't I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. I <laughs> can't. Uh, Brot says, "I was thinking the Marquette game was winnable." But better not play like the first half of the Eastern game. Yeah, I think they still got. It. I mean, I think it's still winnable. You, they came out flat. I think that they'll get that figured out. And uh, you know who else is small? Be all right. Fairly yeah. Dickinson. Fairly Dickinson was tiny, and they beat Purdue. So I mean, Purdue has all their guys are a year older, and they added some athleticism to their team. Yeah, I think if there's team. anybody anybody on Purdue that's going to take the biggest jump or looks like it, I think a lot of people have already said this. Is Braden Smith yeah. uh, had seven assists, four or five from three. Yeah, they're going to be way better. Like they have everybody back. They bring in some important players. Like I think Lance Jones transferred from Southern Illinois is going to be an important guard for them. Um, obviously, Edie's back. You got Lawyer and Smith back. I think Painter said something about how good Trey Kaufman Wren has developed over the offseason. Yeah, they're going to be. Yeah, I mean it's not even close. They're the best team in the conference. So, you think they go undefeated in the Big Ten? No, no, I don't think that's possible anymore. If there was a year, it's this year because it's not going to happen once the other four come in. Right. right. But I mean, Purdue, Samford on Ken Palm right now is a top one hundred and seventy team. They were top one hundred and fifty last year, and Purdue beat them by fifty three. I mean, what what are we <laughs> like? Come on. They're, Samford is way better than Eastern Illinois, by the way. Way better. So I feel like we can't look at the Big Ten right now and not say Purdue's the best team by an absolute – like it's not even close. Anybody in the chat think that it's close? Go ahead. I'll give you a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> it's not close. Like Purdue is way up here. I still think Michigan State is the second best team. Look up the metrics. They're number 162 right now, and you could look at other ones, and they'd probably be in a similar spot. And I know it's preseason metrics, but they were top 150 last season. So I think he's laughing because 170 is not great. but sure. It's not for a SOCON team? That's not great? That's <laughs> I think that's good. why he's laughing, bro. I'm just saying. Illinois played a team. <laughs> Eastern Illinois was like 350th, and they looked like dog shit for the first eight minutes. What are we doing here? I don't know. You're yelling at the fans again. All right. Uh, I think that they think that <laughs> Illinois is in the same level on the same level as Purdue. I don't know if anybody. Thinks it seems that. like they think that. Oh, Samford was so small. Come on. What are we doing here? That'd be close. Purdue right now against Illinois on a neutral site would beat them by 25. And if this is too much of a reality check for everybody, I apologize. But come on. <laughs> I don't get what we're doing if we think that. No, you don't. They don't match up well against Purdue right now. No, they don't. In what way? Please go ahead. With the way Coleman Hawkins played in the first game, you think he matches up well against Zach Eady? Seriously? Okay, great. You think uh, you think Purdue's guards aren't going to be able to do whatever they want on the offensive side of the ball against this Illinois team without Sincere Harris guarding the one? You want Ty Rogers guarding a six foot one guard that can just run around him? You want Lance Jones guarding him? Okay, fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Maybe they'll match up well against Purdue four months from now, but right now with the way that these two teams currently stand and the way they play and the way they're constructed, Purdue is miles better than everybody in the conference. I don't see how anybody can think otherwise, but hey, that's just me. I'm an idiot. What is, I don't know anything. Do you disagree with me? No, I don't actually. <laughs> just, you know, kind of surprising, but. I mean, it's just, <sighs> Samford is not, they're not great, but they're not a team that you just look at and you're like, oh, that team's so bad. They're not like a sub-300 team, which is what Eastern Illinois is. It's what – set like it's – whatever. All I know is that if Illinois played Samford on uh, whatever day that was, they're not beating them by 50. So, whatever. It's probably true. 
probably true. All right. All right. Well, we made an hour because Ethan went on a rant. Good job. I just don't get with it. Hey, good work. Uh, comment section. Great work. Uh, as always, we want to thank Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon. You can find them at 700 Broadway Avenue in Mattoon, Illinois, or at nope. www. I pulled the wrong thing. <laughs> www.alamo slash dash steakhouse.com. Um, November specials. There's a lot of comfort food on there for you guys. Tonight on Tuesday, um, every night, every Tuesday in November is a turkey. Oh, it's, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Well, last night you could have had turkey pot pie. <laughs> well, it's uh, every Tuesday. So just <laughs> you know, next week. Um, I don't know what the Wednesday special is. Uh, sorry. <laughs> a terrible ad reader. It's um, fine. <laughs> uh, on Saturday, though, you can get a roast turkey dinner uh, with whipped potatoes, a turkey gravy, cornbread stuffing, and country style green beans. And don't forget to get dessert pumpkin creme, br creme brulee all november is the featured i'm trying to find wednesday special smoked pork tenderloin medallions tonight sounds better than uh turkey pot pie to me but uh if you guys want to be a sponsor hit us up on twitter or email us at illini basketball podcast at gmail.com um again thank you alamo steakhouse and saloon for uh sponsoring us so yep Sorry, I don't know what today is. <laughs> yeah, what can you do? Uh, all right, we'll be back. Uh, are we? Are we doing the watch party Friday? Uh, I think so. I don't have anything going on yet. All right, so we have a thing. I think so. Uh, Jeff says you gotta give me ten points in a bet against Purdue and Illinois. Well, if you need ten points and they don't match up well, there you go. Thanks, crypto. Uh -huh. I was planning on sincere blocking and ED shot so much for that plan. And someone said sincere is leaving. I don't think sincere is going anywhere. Uh, Jeff says you need to take a val val value. Volume. It's a, a volume. volume. Chill pill, I think. Uh, a volume. I'll take a volume. Fly the dub says shout out to the Alamo owners, Jim and Ken. Shout outs to everybody. Uh, again, thanks everybody. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like. Uh, we're trying to get to 500. We're 23 away from 400. So, got a ways to go. But Yeah, there you go. Um... Ethan left. All right, guys. Have a great uh, night. I don't know what happened. So, uh, Follow us on Twitter. Oh. Uh, yeah, Where did you go? I clicked the really weird button. I don't even know what button I clicked. I clicked something. It was very weird. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> seven seven hundred followers on Twitter would be pretty good. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be back Friday for a watch party. So yeah, Friday night uh, seven o'clock I think is when the ball is tipped. So we'll be live right before then. Uh, and then after that, probably do like a Sunday or Monday episode. So, uh, all right. We'll see everybody on uh, Friday night. Yeah, that's right.